All right, Buff Nation. What is going on, everybody? Hope you're having a wonderful day. Did you see the eclipse? Did you see the eclipse? Now, out here, there wasn't much of a bit of a difference in terms of like it was still daylight out, but 10 degrees dropped. Temperature dropped 10 degrees. That was pretty cool. But I know probably a handful of you guys that watch this video are, will probably be like right there within the shadow. And so I want to know how that was for y'all. That was really cool. But anyways, we're not here to talk about the eclipse as much as I feel like we should be talking about the eclipse and the fact that J. Cole did what I knew he was going to do eventually. And that's just back down from the king. But let's go ahead and get into it. Miles Slusher has officially or it's being reported officially that he is going to enter the transfer portal. I believe that it opens up next week. And so you're going to start to see players, not only from Colorado, but from other schools, start to announce that they're entering the portal. And first off, before I break this down, shout out to Scobuffs Daily. Be sure you're following him on Twitter and on YouTube as well. But hey, first off, just want to say uh, thank you to Miles Slusher for his time. Here's a Buffalo. It was only one year, but sometimes that's just how it happens. That's just how it works out. But uh, Miles Slusher, man, probably the biggest thing that I'll be most thankful for him for is playing a significant role, especially in that first game against TCU. That was one of the best buffs games of all time. And <laughs> Alexi said that was the best buffs game of all time. And hey, Miles Slusher, I appreciate your time here with the Buffs, but um, sad you're not going to be here, but I understand. Sometimes you want to hit the transfer portal, get a different opportunity, and best of luck to him. Be rooting for him as long as he doesn't end up on Nebraska or something like that. Uh, best of luck to you, okay? Now, uh, let's go ahead and get into where we're at with the safety room and kind of what we're, we're losing a little bit because Miles Slusher is one of those veterans. I think especially with that new commitment of Malachi Murphy and him signing as a scholarship player, we're probably going to see a handful of guys uh, leave the program. We'll need some scholarships to open up. So, uh, yeah, if you guys are wondering, okay, where was Miles Slusher? Uh, he was categorized here on PFF as a cornerback, and I think that was just mainly because he – played that slot position, that star position player, you know, so he's kind of that slot safety hybrid linebacker, so to speak, uh, kind of a jack of all trades type of player. And uh, Slusher, I wish that we were able to see a little bit more from him because uh, we didn't see him uh, play uh, too, too much just due to injury. And so, yeah, as you can see here, didn't play a ton of snaps this past year, but definitely a talented guy. And he graded out uh, really well whenever he was on the field. So I think he's got another year of eligibility or so. And so, uh, again, best of luck to wh wherever he's going. He was a good player for us, but uh, you're not going to find me freaking out right now because I do think our safety group and star position group is one of the deepest uh, on the team. And there are a lot of guys at this position that I'm that I have been curious to see how they play given more time. And I'll run through some of the other guys that you can expect us to, to see on the field quite a bit, playing at safety, playing at that slot role. First off, let's talk about Jaden Milner Jones, DeSoto, Texas going into his true sophomore season. I believe he played. Yeah, he was active throughout the whole season, and I thought he played uh, really, really well. Let me go ahead and open up his uh, premium stats here so we can take a look at that. And here we go. And you can see, again, uh, anytime a, a freshman's on the field, it's going to take them a little while to get acclimated. But we saw him play a significant um, amount of snaps at the end of the season. You see 66 snaps against Washington State. That was a tough one. And then against Utah, uh, yeah, he, he had a couple missed tackles against Utah. But I'm not freaking out about that because we saw his open field tackling uh, be, be really well and be really good in – 
you know, smaller spurts uh, th throughout the whole season. And he's somebody, when you go back and look at the team last year, as a true freshman, you like the way that he moves. Um, I, I'm expecting him to take a, 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 a nice jump this year. And I would imagine that Jaden Milliner Jones is going to be one of our starting safeties. Uh, if not this year, I definitely expect it in 2025. We'll see kind of who fills that star position role. My guess would be Preston Hodge, mainly because he's played slot throughout uh, his career for the most part at Liberty. But as you've seen on the well-off videos, uh, I believe they've been running him at, at outside uh, boundary corner as well. So he's he's got some versatility there, which is uh, really great. Now, uh, another guy that we could see some uh, from as well this season is a guy that played a little bit in the slot, and that is a, a guy that some of y'all have wondered if he might hit the transfer portal. I don't think so, but let me pull up his page here. And this is Omarion Cooper. He's uh, one of our veteran defensive backs in uh, the secondary room right now, and he didn't have the best year, <laughs> but that's okay. We had like the 130th ranked defense or whatever it was, but we saw him play a little bit in slot, uh, but mainly playing that outside uh, boundary corner. But I think that he could do it. I know that it's also kind of been talked about a lot of people in the comments in the live chat saying that he's been sitting with the, the safety room. Uh, more so like in the meetings. And so maybe you might see him play uh, a little bit of that star position as well, because that usually does fall under the safety umbrella uh, positionally. So we'll see how that goes. But I want to be surprised. Again, my hope is that Cormani McLean, um, and it starts opposite of Travis Hunter this year, but Omarion Cooper being one of our most uh, veteran cornerbacks that we got on the team he very well uh, could return as a starter for this team this year at not only the star position but at boundary corner if that's how it shakes out now another one um, and again a player that I'm very high on my friend Rawhide is very high on and a few of y'all um, I think are in my corner in his corner as well and that is uh, Carter Stoutmeyer moving to safety I think, um, again, I thought he showed some good stuff as a true freshman playing on an ankle that he probably should have gotten surgery on last year. But uh, before the injury, I, I thought played really well. His open field tackling, uh, I thought within the small spurts that we saw, he did uh, very, very well. Again, missed tackle percentage right here of only 7.7%. And, uh, hey, if y'all listen to Shiloh, you know that – Hey, this is significantly less than what he had, and that's a good percentage. But, of course, small sample size. I think moving him to safety is a really good move. I think that he's going to end up being a better safety than he was cornerback, but he does have co cover skills. Maybe not uh, maybe not the best to line up against some of the speediest guys in the Big 12 or something like that, but I think moving him uh, to that star role – safety role i think that that's gonna fit his skill set more and i thought again small sample space but i thought he was one of the most sure tacklers on the team uh out of all the guys that we had kind of hit the field so in 511 uh, 205 pounds you got to imagine that he might even have put on a little bit more weight since whenever this was given i mean he, he he's got a a college football type body, even when he entered campus last year. So uh, I, I, I'm interested to see kind of how this whole position battle shakes out. Again, in summary, we got Preston Hodge. We have Omarion Cooper, Jaden Milliner Jones, who I included in this title. I think that uh, we saw him play a little bit of that star position last year at the end of the season. And uh, Carter Stoutmeyer, we'll see how he's used. Of course, you guys uh, also know that Cameron Silman Craig played a little bit of that slot role last year. However, I see him as one of our starting safeties uh, at, alongside Shiloh. And uh, who knows where Herman Smith goes as well. Let me look up Herman Smith because I think that he was mainly playing a traditional safety position as well, but I could be wrong on this. 
guy coming in here for a depth role uh, on the team. Yeah, actually played more slot than like free safety or one of those traditional safety roles. I feel like I've seen him in some of the well-off practices play more of that traditional like free safety, but obviously he has some versatility in terms of where you can put him. I mean, two-thirds of his snaps were were here in the slot. Let me see if I can find his stuff from like Jackson State. So 2021, 2022, we saw him play more of that free safety spot at Jackson State in 2022 as opposed to slot. So it was like flipped only one third or maybe, can't do math right now, uh, like a quarter of his snaps were were in the slot. So that's going to be interesting. And maybe one of the reasons why he came out here was because Idaho State wasn't using him correctly. That is pretty interesting that you would see a player used drastically different, uh, drastically uh, in, in a different way, uh, in a different position, and you barely saw him play for Idaho State last year. So we'll just have to see. But uh, with all that being said, let me go ahead and get to your guys' thoughts and comments on this. Where do you think uh, Miles Slusher ends up going? Who do you see starting at the safety or, or slot positions right now? Let me know. Let me go ahead and get to it. But I'm hoping that we see a lot of uh, uh, Jaden Milner Jones this year. I do think that he is going to be eventually a starting safety for this team. Bodie, what's going on? Hope you're having a, a great evening. David, I heard Cormani is secretly working with NFL players and working on his skill. If so, he's going to come back big. Hey, that's. That's my hope. I would love to see it. Again, I think Cormani has got all the physical tools to be successful, you know, as uh, as it is the case for a lot of these five-star guys coming up into college football from the high school ranks. Can they take that next step when it comes to their preparation and discipline and more so the, the mental side? You know, it's definitely more of a job than it was, uh, you know, during your time in high school. And so I'm excited to hopefully see him uh, turn the corner. I feel like we have seen him uh, take steps uh, in the right direction, you know, with being student of the week earlier this semester and seeing how hard he has hit the weight room. Now let's see, okay, can he put it all together, whether it's injury, whether it's classroom stuff uh, this semester for why we haven't really seen him on the practice field. I don't know. I've heard, I've heard either of those reasons, but uh, I, I am excited to see um, hopefully uh, him continue to take those steps in the right direction, learn from any minor setbacks that he might have and uh, fulfill fulfill his potential uh, that's what i would love to see again a 6-3 guy long wingspan physical can tackle i yes hearing something like this is great i wonder who he's working with uh, I, I would have no idea maybe out here in denver well i guess champ bailey doesn't live out here anymore so i don't know <laughs> your guess is as good as mine but i appreciate the five dollar super chat Bodie. thanks for always being here with me <laughs> gave his slush was boo boo juice yeah it was uh it was a shame we didn't get to see him on the field as much and i think that's if i remember correctly y'all can correct me if i'm wrong but i think that the injury bug has kind of been something that he has uh, dealt with throughout his college career and yet last year was was no exception it was a bummer but wish him well and again i'm uh, i'm really excited to see who steps up at the safety role I feel like it's one of the deepest positions that we have on the team. And so uh, you're not going to see any panic from me. E3, I'm sorry I, I scared you about Jaden Milner-Jones. Really high on Jaden Milner-Jones. I think he's going to be great. Jalen Rushing saying he's the one. Yes. Again, guys, whenever you're able to get meaningful snaps on the field, at the power four level as a true freshman, you're doing something right. And uh, he played a lot of snaps for us. And that is anytime you can get a little bit of production from a true freshman, that is, uh, that's like bonus points to me uh, because most of the time, especially three-star rated guy coming in here, 
their freshman, true freshman year, I'm not going to expect them to do much. I'm going to expect most of them to redshirt. The fact that he was able to work his, his way into the rotation uh, with a lot of, of veteran uh, DBs coming in here. I mean, guys that have been playing college football for a, a handful of years, the fact that he was able to crack uh, top of that backup rotation uh, by, by the end of the year, I think is uh, speaks volumes about where where he's going. <laughs> That's true, Jeanette. It's not secret if uh, if we're talking about it. <laughs> Defense will be fine. Yes, yes, you're absolutely right. And again, the biggest need is let's continue to bolster up that D line. I'm not nearly as worried about the linebackers as I am our D line. Let's continue to get some good D line players because if we get great D line players, man, the linebackers are going to be fine. Now, you're not going to hear me complaining if we bring in some more linebackers. De definitely not. But I would still prioritize uh, interior defensive line over linebacker. I think it's just a more important position. You can get away with having quote unquote average talent at linebacker if you got some good talent up front. Yeah, let's see. Yep, Carter was moved to safety. I still think we'll see him play a little bit of the slot or at least given the opportunity to. I'll probably have my most accurate analysis when I go to the spring game. Uh, this year and hopefully we can get a good idea of the different positions that they're trying these guys out or practicing them at yeah it's tough because when he was on the field he was really good but again a lot of the guys that have uh, an injury prone history it's hard to just assume that they're going to be on the field you know at for games in the future you know you just can't count on it and uh, I really do feel like this is a good opportunity to see what our young, promising talent can do. Let's see. Exactly. King Carlito, 83. Carter is a safety. Milner Jones a safety. I like uh, about their size. Yes, yes, yes. And that's why I wonder, with the newest signee to the high school class, Malachi Murphy, Six feet, 190 plus pounds. Looking at his uh, tape, I do wonder if he might transition over to safety, make that transition. I do question whether he has the quickness to play boundary corner at the power four level. We'll just have to see. But when you're already coming in as a true freshman at 190 plus pounds, uh, you're going to be able to still put on more weight and it might just work better for his body. Uh, to transition to safety. I also did wonder, hey, maybe might we see Jaden Milner Jones transition to linebacker at some point, uh, depending on how much weight he's put on. But I think like right now, I'm disregarding that and still kind of looking at him more long term to still be a safety. But Malachi Murphy, Ben Boozy, some of these guys, uh, it'll be interesting to see if they can crack their way into special teams or the rotation at all. But I, I'm assuming for both of them right now that it's probably going to be a couple of years before we really see, uh, you know, what they are, what they become, what they can become. I would imagine that both of, both of them are going to be redshirted this year. But Haba Bacon, great name, by the way. I hope McKinney starts uh, opposite of Hunter. Cormani is slow. Interesting. I guess I'm going to need to watch a little bit more of McKinney outside of like the two games that I've watched to have more of an opinion on it. But I do like the fact that McKinney comes in here already having starting uh, Big 12 corner experience. And he's a guy that uh, he I don't think he's touched his uh, ceiling at all either right now. So we could definitely see him take another jump as well. And another guy, too, that I keep forgetting about that I'm wanting, maybe I do a deep dive on him at some point is, I believe his name's Israel Solomon, the walk-on from, from IMG that was here last year. Guy who had that pick six in the scrimmage this weekend against uh, Shador. I wonder what he's going to do at corner. I wonder what Adam Hopkins is going to do. I'm so ready to see what Adam Hopkins can do at the cornerback position. Pog, people got to realize the portal cycle is going to be crazy because of the no restrictions. There's going to be some monsters entering from other programs who aren't even looking right now. 
yeah, and hopefully we're we're able to benefit again. I was <laughs> I was talking with uh, some friends earlier today, and I you know are are there some schools that might be targeting some of our players? Sure, but again, I feel like uh, coming off the season that we did, I I don't think we're going to see a mass exodus or a mass poaching of our talent. That's just kind of how I feel about it. Uh, I think we'll really be able to benefit from this uh, this season and yeah, bring in more big guys. That's all I really care about right now. Just bring in the linemen, baby. That's right. Carter's recovering from surgery. That's why we haven't seen him. William Barry. Good to see you. Hope you're doing well. He says, I'm not feeling Carter. Like that, I may be wrong, but I still don't see the talent and looking past the injury even. That's okay. We can all have different opinions on some of these players. And again, I understand it. It's not like he played perfectly on the field when when he got on there. Uh, but I, I just, I don't know. Opposite of you, I guess I just got a good feeling. But hey, if uh, if things go wrong, I'll be sad and I'll give you credit. Uh, for, for being right. But I, I really hope he can take another step this year. Uh, let's see what else we got. William Barry also saying block bully looking very good. Uh, going NFL after the season? Uh, that would be interesting. On the offensive side, I love what I see from Welsh. A star about to be born. Yes, Clinton Portis, baby. Clinton Portis, Micah Welsh, you can do just a little bit of everything. And uh, oh my goodness, we have almost 300 people in here. Y'all be sure to uh, smash that like and consider uh, subscribing if that's your thing. I would love it. But l- let's go ahead and look up some PFF stuff with uh, Chidoze. I know that we saw some clips of him working in the one-on-ones. I hope we post more of that stuff. Like That stuff's pretty cool to see those guys go at it. I really like it. And let's go ahead and bring up Wonkwo. Let me share my screen again really quick. But yeah, he's a guy that I feel like right now, in terms of at least production, out of all the transfers that we've brought in on the defensive line, he is by far the most proven. And again, playing last year in the Big 12, Uh, Graded out really, really well. Again, graded the 168th best defensive tackle or uh, interior defensive lineman uh, in college football. He's draft eligible as early as next year. I would hope that he sticks around because I, you know, I would like some continuity, you know. But uh, I mean, we'll just uh, we'll just have to see. 5'11", 300 pounds, about uh, graded out really well against uh, particularly the run, and and we'll see. One thing I'm really interested to see is if he takes a jump this year in that pass rushing category. Again, it can be a little tough um, if you know you don't have maybe the strongest arms, but um, or longest arms rather. You know, I feel like the the long arms, the long wingspan usually helps uh, really well with pass rushers because it allows the offensive linemen, uh, if you have a longer wingspan than them, it's it, can be hard for them to get your hand their hands on you you know uh, but that that's something in his game that i would love to see grow uh, let me go ahead and let's just take a look at where he was in the in the big 12 uh, compared to you know all these other teams okay so let's see let me do some counting. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. 10, 11, 12. Hey, so, I mean, graded as the 12th best in the Big 12 last year. I'm not sure how many guys have left outside of Trevondre Sweat, Byron Murphy, but I think he's definitely going to be uh, an above average player on our defensive line uh, th- this year, no doubt. Again, we'll just have to see. I hope he sticks around, but. Hey, if he has a dominant year, maybe he does go to the NFL. Um, wh- who am I to say? <laughs> uh, Brie Love did struggle here, man. That was a that was a tough one. I think he ended up at Purdue, right? 
Hey, shout out to Jack Bailey, by the way. I called it. I called it that he was going to Northwestern. Have a guy in your corner like Bill O'Boyle. Jack Bailey's going to get a wonderful master's degree from a very prestigious university in Northwestern. William Barry saying he's liking Savion Wilk or Wilkerson in practice so far. So, hey, that's awesome. Uh, again, I would love to, to add a running back, but that's not like the biggest need right now for this team, especially if Welsh is going to be able to uh, fill in if we are in of need as well. So if we got four guys that we can depend on, that's wonderful. William Barry saying, I watched more tape on him. Oh, my God, block bully blocks uh, one way. <laughs> and laterals back to fill holes and make tackles. Reads offense really well. Strong with speed. Yes, uh, in the few games that I've seen of his as well, I feel like he holds his ground really well. And, again, we'll see what happens with Shane Cox. I've kind of noticed in the practice videos they've kind of had him a little bit all over the place. But I do think we'll see a better year from Shane Cox this year as well. I think he will be part of the rotation. Uh, somewhere on the line and at some point i i think i need to go back and you know show show some clips of shane Cox that show that man he he was not hot hot garbage like he was labeled to be maybe average that's okay okay fpsd appreciate the five dollar super chat uh means a lot and thank you again william for yours as well highlight of my day outside of the eclipse standing by to see who's going to transfer at this point it's only an issue if a starter transfers i feel the same exact way now there are a few depth guys that i would like to see uh, stick around uh, again it seems like right now from what i've mainly seen is that khalil benson's been running with the ones at the right tackle but they have moved him around a bit i don't think that that's going to be a position that's decided on this early it probably won't be until sometime in fall camp, but I'm hoping Savion Washington sticks around. I would like to have uh, some depth there at tackle. With David Connor right now on a leave of absence, uh, we're pretty thin right there at tackle if we have uh, one of those guys leave. That leaves us with Jordan Seaton, true freshman, and, and Philip Houston, a guy that uh, you know, I, I thought it's kind of looked good in, in some of what I've seen on, on, on the practice videos from well off. But again, just a little bit undersized. I think that he's a guy that you want uh, playing in a support role rather than a, a starting role or first guy off the bench type of role right now. But yeah, as long as we're able to keep our starters, I, I'm going to be happy. And I, I'm trying to think, like, who else could I see? Uh, entering the portal or who I would expect. I don't know. Like I, I, I really just don't uh, have an idea. I think um, again, Trevor Woods was a guy that I was wondering and I thought that he should enter the portal uh, if he wasn't going to play, but I think it's very clear. The coaching staff has made it very clear that he is going to play. We'll see if he's a starter or not come, uh, August, but I think he's going to stick around and will be uh, playing in the rotation. But speaking of linebacker, Habba Bacon saying, uh, I'm concerned about the inside linebacker. Yes, yes. Uh, it would be nice, especially with the front, I think, that we're going to play. We need some linebackers that can really play the run really strongly. Uh, again, hopefully... My hope is that Benson, or um, not Benson, Bentley, Woods, Wester, these guys are going to look better back there. Well, Wester wasn't here, but y'all know what I'm saying, with an improved D-line. But it would be nice to have another guy who has proven uh, to be very dependable and solid at the Power 4 level. And I'm really uh, excited about Jalen Wester being here, graded out very well, number one against the run in college football last year. But as we know, Sometimes there's a transition period coming up from the G5 level or the FCS, all of that. BP's in agreement with this too. We need linebackers. Yes. Right now, okay, if I had to prioritize, I'm curious what y'all think. If I had to prioritize, okay, what do we go after in the portal? Number one, defensive line. Number two, offensive line. Then I got linebacker at number three. It's a close number three, but I just feel like the linebackers are a little bit more dependent on 
just like running backs are dependent a little bit on the on the offensive line i would just like to solidify the trenches as much as we can and if we get a linebacker i'm thinking i'm thinking we will adam monster tiger and some of the other people actually plugged into the program have talked about how that's going to be a target in the transfer portal season it's icing on the cake it's bonus points William Barry saying, I'm loving Coach Sat building them boys' confidence already. I think that people don't see the little things that count. And maybe some of you former players are able to see kind of the little things that he is doing. But um, as a, a general fan, I just love to see the fact that he's clearly excited about this. <laughs> like, this isn't uh, just a, you know, just he's just doing it because he was asked to or he's just doing it for the paycheck or anything like that. Now, I think it's great that we have paid him, that we have paid him like an assistant coach. I think that's wonderful. But uh, you can tell that he is uh, truly, truly motivated, inspired, uh, fulfilled in doing this. And I've loved to see his energy uh, on the on the YouTube videos that have been put out. Like that's been really great to see. And we need some of that, you know, with Coach Sal right now on the on the sideline, on the mend. All right, just scrolling through some more comments. Again, if you guys want to ensure that I read something, feel free to send me a super chat. But um, we'll have to see. Rawhide had a wonderful conversation with Rawhide today. Talked a lot about music. I was filling him in on that whole J. Cole, uh, Kendrick Lamar thing. And, and we talked some other, some other pieces of ball as well. And look who it is. Straight from the land of corn are... Lovely Cornhuskers fan member, honorary member of of, uh, of Buff Nation. Although he, you know, it's okay not to go put that out there. Great to see what Coach is doing the last three weeks. Yes, said Coach. Yes, hey, this is an exciting time, and uh, again, I think we're going to improve. I think we're going to have a good year of football this year, and I like to see uh, Mike. The fact that I want to talk about the university, give credit to the university. There can be this narrative that CU doesn't have the money. They don't have the money. They don't have the money. Okay. Do they have the money compared to, to Nebraska or Texas A&M, Auburn, any of those SEC schools right now? No. But this is not a, a school that is, that's operating like your nonprofit down the road. Okay. Some people seem to think that it is. Uh, the fact that we were able uh, that that the program is paying somebody like Warren Sapp what he should be getting, uh, even though he's coming in as a GA, I think is wonderful. The fact that CU has created a position to have George Hegeman here, um, kind of overseeing the whole leadership uh, football uh, and football program. I would assume that his role is pretty similar to how he was overseeing things at IMG as well, but he's going to be able to ensure that. A, a lot of things that I think we saw go wrong this past year i mean you listen to it in his interview he's just like man like i had to come in here uh, i cu couldn't i couldn't bear to see myself watch those things again because i can help correct those things that was wonderful to see him uh, talk about and the fact that cu's created a uh, position uh, to bring him on staff is is wonderful things are looking up it's a fun time to be a buffs fan now mike i have talked with my fellow broncos fan podcaster of mainly broncos podcast cameron um cameron parker yeah i want to say christian parker he's an assistant coach cameron parker big time nebraska fan he's gonna come on i think after the spring game and we're gonna do like a, a behind the enemy lines uh type of uh uh yeah, like Nebraska, get to know the team, what's going on, all that. So be sure to tune in for, for that. Okay. And I think that's going to be a lot of fun. And I'm going to have them on my Broncos channel. Should be a lot of fun. Really flawed. Hope you're having a wonderful day. Hey, Texas, Texas, Tavondre Sweat. Terrible to see him arrested. But, the, hey, I, I mean, I want my Broncos to get him so bad. Let's see what else we got. Yep, 
yeah, Mike, it's going to be a lot of fun. And uh, appreciate the $10 super chat. As always, I'm still waiting for you to start your Nebraska channel, by the way. All right, let's see here. Okay, Hustle Montana. Who do you want starting as your free safety? Uh, Cameron Silman Craig. That's who I would like. Um, and then I think Shiloh can kind of play a little bit more of that, um, I guess, like strong or in-the-box safety role. But I I do like his ability to cover uh, quite a bit. And I I believe that's where he played at Jackson State mainly as well, correct? Uh, that's, that's who I want to see as the starting safety tandem. And then in the slot, again, uh, Preston Hodge, uh, Jaden Milner Jones, I guess, would be those first two guys probably to have a, a stab at it. Maybe you guys can tell me if you've seen other guys uh, taking reps there. Uh, maybe Omari and Cooper, maybe those kind of three. It really seems a little bit up in the air right now, especially if they do want to have Hodge play a little bit more outside. Uh, not Not totally sure yet. And uh, Hustle Montana, thank you for the $20 donation. Uh, that that really does mean a lot. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Jaron Jang says he wants to see Cooper. You want to see Cooper there at, uh, at safety? Eric Turner coming in here saying, and Dion is hard on McKinney. I think he wants him to be the cornerback too, but honestly, Preston Hodge looks the best even though he is the projected nickel. Hey, great minds think alike was just talking about this. Yes. And I, I think when Coach Prime, yes, is very hard uh, on some of these players, it's because he sees greatness in them, you know. And, again, what I like about a lot of the DBs that we're bringing in, these guys got the physical tools. You can't teach a long wingspan. You can't teach 6'1", 6'2". You can't do that. You can teach everything else, the technique. You can become looser. You can become faster. You're still a smaller or a um, a younger player, so there's still time to develop, okay? But I love the fact that we're bringing in guys that have physical tools um, you know, at the top level. Now let's see if they can put it all together, refine their game, uh, truly, truly uh, become professionals of their craft. I think McKinney has the tools to do that as well. And uh, Preston Hodge, I mean, yeah. Uh, everything that I've seen with him so far on uh, the the practice videos that I've seen has has looked great. And I mean, I th again, I thought that he was gonna start the slot, but hey, if they want to move him outside, if they feel like hey, he he can really cover on the boundary, well, then it just makes that competition for the boundary corner uh, that that CB two spot even more uh, even more intense. And I, I think iron sharpens iron. Whoever ends up getting that starting spot will definitely earned it and likely will have improved their game over this off season. Darren Jennings wants to see Cooper at safety, Cooper playing nickel. That would be interesting. Like we flip them. So we have Hodge outside. We have Cooper playing the nickel could be very interesting. Mr. Hillsman saying, I honestly wouldn't be surprised if McLean decided to hit the portal as well, even though he said he wasn't transferring. Yeah, you won't see a bunch of like freaking out from me until um, really with any player until something is like official, you know. So I know that a handful of y'all have been saying that you think Slusher is transferring, but I'm just going to wait until I see it officially reported before I really give a reaction on it. I know uh, Cormani has said, hey, um, I'm here, but again, uh, things can change very quickly. I hope he stays here, uh, but hey, if that day were to ever happen, I will get on here and, of course, talk about it. I appreciate the kind words, Bodie. Yeah, hit that like button. Feel free to hit that subscribe. Let me know a player that you guys want to see a film room on. I know Ron had asked me recently if I could go back and break down some of, of uh, Cash Cleveland's high school tape. So I'm going to do that. Uh, I will do videos on walk-ons if it is requested. <laughs> Do 
Exactly. Yes. Yes, Cam Duncan. It has uh, been reported, which is why I am on here. Habba Bacon, do you think we will switch to a base 3-4, not loving this 4-2, especially with our linebackers? No. Uh, I don't. I think we will stick at the 4-2, but it kind of essentially is a 3-4. If you kind of look to see, like they have that, what you would call like that wide edge, that attacking edge, that's more at that like seven or nine technique. And then you got your other edge there uh, that I guess would be more of a, that'd be more of a seven. I'm getting my whole, my whole lineup screwed up. Um, but I, yeah, I, I think that it would, it could still kind of feel kind of like a three, four, the issue right now with this four two, or with uh, this this four th- or this three four, is that I still feel like we need bigger bodies in there um, with what we have at inside linebacker. It, I'm you're hitting the nail on the head here. I still feel like we need some bigger bodies in there, uh, but I will say it seems like uh, Anquin Barnes, a guy that I've been very skeptical about, just because he hasn't gotten on the field. Uh, it seems like he is uh, having a lot of good reps. So uh, we'll see. Again, guys, it's just practice. Uh, you're not going to find me freaking out much about practice. And to be honest, it's hard for me to get a good gauge on the offensive and defensive lines looking at practice stuff. Uh, we learned our lesson from last year. <laughs> you know, so I, I don't totally know. But I think uh, regardless, I think for either defensive front to work, Right now, we just need bigger bodies in there. Um, again, I think we've improved from where we're at in terms of our defensive interior, but I, I I want this defense to be the best in the Big 12. No doubt. It's just hard for me. I, I can't bullshit y'all right now and get on here and say, I think we got the best defense in the Big 12. I don't think that, but I think we do have a better defense than what we had last year, and I'm just going to hope for average, baby. Because an average defense and an average offensive line, we saw with what we can do with our skill position players and Shador there at quarterback, we'll be able to win a lot of games being average at certain positions. Where I just don't want us to be is below average anywhere. We saw what happened when we were below average anywhere. I think sometimes people can get upset or they see it as like hating if if we expect or just see one of our position groups right now as average. I no 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 no. I, average is gonna help us win uh, games. Uh, below average is not. That's when you're subtracting uh, from contributing towards a win. All right. Hey, this is great. This is a great one. Just Jenny um, IP. Just Jenny P. Sorry, I can't read. Thank you for the five dollar super chat. I would love to see the film on the English kid. Kofi Taylor Barracks. Yes, he has heart. Would love to see if he has potential. Of course. Now, there's not going to be much for me to gather from from like a college film perspective, but it's probably been over a year since I've done a video on him when my channel was super teeny tiny. And he's definitely a guy. Maybe I could do some of the not called sneaky good recruits anymore. Maybe just like a, I don't know. I'll have to come up with a f- fun series name for it, but just for some sleepers, uh, sleeper guys, some guys who redshirted last year to highlight them a little bit more, refreshing you guys on like their story, their strengths, skill sets, because he's coming in now for his true or his redshirt freshman year, and I think he's already like twenty years old. Like he's an older guy uh, because he spent time training to get a scholarship in London. Uh, here at a power five program and he went to a lot of different camps i remember uh, one of my friends who works for 11 warriors covering ohio state he was able to uh, do a, an extensive interview with him at uh, at one of the ohio state camps uh, the summer before he committed here which was which was pretty cool but i know he's got some interviews out there and i can put together a, a video kind of breaking him down uh, you probably just yeah, you, you'll be able to see kind of the talent level that he was going at in, in England. Uh, it probably compares to some some lower level high school ball, but uh, he's a great athlete, a speedy guy. I'm hoping to God we don't move this guy from inside linebacker. He played mainly edge uh, during his time in London, but I think 
sometimes learning that inside linebacker position just takes time. Like it's it's a hard position to learn, but he's older, he's mature, he uh, he's overcome a lot. He has a fantastic work ethic, and I can get into that in the in the video on just what he was doing to earn a scholarship here in the states. It was insane stuff, and I think he's got the ability to learn how to play that position really well. The one thing that's kind of pissed me off, I'm going to try not to swear much, is that a lot of these great athletes that I feel like are a little bit raw that we've brought in initially to learn the inside linebacker position, we're moving them to other fucking positions, and it's driving me crazy. Um, Victory Johnson was a guy that I was very interested to see how he would translate, given some time to learn that inside linebacker position. Uh, Same with uh, the tight end. What, why am I forgetting his name right now? Not Savell Smalls, Morgan Pearson, another guy that's just a really damn good athlete. And, hey, we need bodies at tight end. This might be where he ends up being better. But I, my Broncos do this all the time, too, where they bring in these like really interesting athletes that are really raw but just need a little bit of time, like Drew Sanders. And uh, we saw this happen this past year. They're like, ah, no, you know. Um, you know, he, he looked bad in some games. Well, no duh. It's just going to take a while to transition to learn that position going up to the next level. And they've moved him to edge and he's going to be an undersized edge, uh, playing in a rotation where he's not even starting where I feel like he's the best athlete that we have right now. If he were to stay at that inside linebacker group, I don't know why staffs are so quick and keen to move off of, uh, players at inside linebacker when it's pretty well known that it just takes longer than other positions to learn. Am I crazy about that guys? Am I crazy for that take? But all that to say, I hope we keep Kofi Barracks Taylor, uh, Kofi Taylor Barracks inside. I know he's been on the well off videos, but y'all tell me, Dave, they already moved him to edge. <laughs> Yes, Torian Carter, he's going to be uh, a lot of fun. And uh, I'm hoping, again, now two years removed from that ACL injury, I'm, I'm really excited. Hey, appreciate the love, Eva's mom, as always. Yeah, speaking facts, it, it isn't hating. Yeah, yeah, no doubt. Um, <laughs> old man, I'm just here for the positivity. That's wonderful. That's wonderful. I And old man... I love your graphic design work, man. Darren Jennings coming in here saying, McCoy, Eric Brantley, Davis Swain are going to be problems, and it's going to be interesting to see if Eric Brantley or Davis Swain are good enough to burn that red shirt with. Um, it's going to be very interesting. Again, I like the idea of, red shirting 90 percent of your freshmen that you get every year i think again you see it with utah for instance okay they red shirt guys they develop guys they're not throwing guys in there too early ideally that's how i would like to see this thing done but i know things are changing a little bit with the transfer portal <laughs> hey Bodie, i i really do appreciate it five dollar super chat <laughs> Puff, puff, pass. That's right. Hey, and, uh, you know, Coach Prime, man, I, I thought it was so funny that he was talking about this earlier about how, uh, or last week about just smelling that, smelling the weed in Colorado. I just think it is hilarious. And uh, it's, it's again, it's hard to be too upset. This is more laid back culture out here. That's just, you know, that's just how it is. And uh, it's one of the unique things about Folsom is that it definitely smells like weed uh, for all the games. And uh, here in a couple weeks, you will smell weed at the spring game. And y'all let me know if you're going to the spring game. Yes, William Barry, you're absolutely right about Jalen Wester. I'm projecting him to be a starter right now, uh, but we'll see. It seems like he's going to be in a very close competition uh, with Trevor Woods, and they kind of are the same physical archetype. And it would be nice to get another thumper in there, you know, kind of the guy that that Bentley profiles to be, uh, because 
yeah, we'll we'll need some guys in in that inside linebacker room too. They need to play the the run first primarily. Uh, we'll need them in run support. They need to be stout in that. Even though Wester's undersized, it's great to see that he's at least shown production at the G five level of being really damn good. But uh, let me read your comment. Sorry. Hey David, don't forget about Jane Wester. He's gonna get after it. I think we're good. Uh, I think we we're gonna be good at linebacker. Also, Brandon Davis Swain's name's been ringing in practice. I saw CU a CU coach praising the kid already. Yeah, I saw that too. And I like that he's a little bit of a soft spoken guy. I I kind of like that. And I'm sure he'll bring the tenacity out when when he's on the field. You know. Hubba Bacon says I see Victory Johnson leaving. I was hoping he could take over the inside linebacker position. And it's so funny with, with most of the years that we've seen at CU over the last 10 years or so, a guy like Victory Johnson or Morgan Pearson very well could have come in here and start typically as an inside linebacker, their true freshman year with normally like how this stuff goes. It's just a little bit different now that we're bringing in higher level of, of player, but I really do hope to see uh, Victory Johnson. I feel like he was viewed a little bit more, as a project uh, at that position that he was going to take at least a couple years before uh, they they were going to give him a run at the inside linebacker position but it just sucks to to see him move because i already feel like we're good at edge and but maybe i'm wrong i mean what do i know i picked this team to win eight games last year <laughs> you know i thought we had an average offense and defensive line last year so uh, what, what do I know? If we need more support there, he's got the body to do it because he's, what, 6'4", 250, 255? Like, he's got the body to play edge. But imagine if you could have an athlete like that playing inside. That can change things. That can change your defense. Let's see here. What else we got? Going through a little bit more going to wind this down here in a few minutes y'all i got to get some dinner so again if you want to ensure that i see anything shoot me a super chat days to come thinking that uh, victory johnson is going to leave i would imagine that we see some guys that were brought in at the high school level leave this pat uh, this this year we'll have to see i mean some guys that we just haven't really heard from much um that Man, I've been. I wish we had like a JV team or like played other opponents with like our backups or redshirted players like in the spring because I am really interested interested to see what a guy like Assad Wasim can do or like uh, Jacob Page. But those are other guys that I do wonder if they're going to hit the transfer portal because they just want to have an opportunity to play. And again, guys, uh, with ninety five percent of these rosters having football players that don't go to the NFL, uh, make sure you make the most out of this time. You know, if you really want to play, go seek an opportunity where you're able to play. And I'm, I'm never going to hate on somebody for, for wanting to do that. Um, but I do, I do wonder if we might see some of those guys uh, hit the portal that we didn't even get a look at last year. Uh, Cause I'm trying to think like the path to playing time for, Jacob Page and Asad Wasim. I mean, it's I don't know if they'll they'll ever hit the field here with some of the other wide receivers that aren't even on campus yet and the other guys that we'll be bound to bring in throughout the the transfer portal. And I, I'm hoping Jordan Onavue sticks around though, because again, I love to see him get credit from Coach Prime this past year about his work ethic. Again, a late bloomer at modern day, basically didn't play much at all it didn't start until a senior year at modern day put up great stats but again that's why he was not recruited highly he was just a late bloomer but what six two right six two built like freaking i mean he's built like a tank i think he's like six two over 200 pounds and i like those big physical receivers again i don't like sh short football players okay um i don't like small football players uh, this guy's a a bigger player at the wide receiver position and a lot of people of course, are talking about that Omari Miller catch that he had over, I think it was Israel Solomon, which was great. But a lot of people aren't talking about, and I did a little video on this last week, I thought a more impressive catch was Jordan Onavue's catch down the sideline for the touchdown over DJ McKinney and before Shiloh got over uh, to, to make that breakup play. Uh, he was, uh, he, 
he was making a fantastic circus catch over guys that are like, you know, in consideration with DJ McKinney, uh, you know, might be a starter this year, you know, interesting stuff. Right. And I, I hope that he continues to make the most of his uh, playing time and I look forward to seeing what he can do in the spring game. Days to come sees uh, 20 kids leaving this spring. I don't know if I can go that far. I think I would see more of around 10 or so. That's kind of been my expectation, and I feel like that will fall. That's kind of like the norm now, right, with with college football churn in the transfer portal era. Maybe it might be more because of uh, now you don't have to sit out a year. We'll just have to see. But I, I still would expect probably around 10. And yeah, Kofi very well could be another one of these guys that that chooses to leave. But I, I'm hoping ultimately that we see most of the team stick around. Again, I think continuity is one of the best things for building winning culture uh, to and for building real wins because you learn how to play with each other. You, you become bonded uh, with each other. I think we've seen that. You know, last year, I don't think our team – reached our potential last year. And I think maybe some of that had to do with the fact that everybody was new and that there wasn't that type of chemistry where you're able to read and understand what guys are doing on the field so much. Now we have brought in some new starters here, of course, for this year, but it's a lot less compared to last year, which basically outside of Trevor Woods and Jared Christian Lichtenhan and Van Wells, everybody else was a new player. And uh, continuity, I think, is is really important. Dylan is still undersized, but hey, I was telling Ra this on the phone today when I was talking with him. I would not be surprised, man. I just got this feeling that Dylan Edwards is going to be our most productive back. That's just how I'm feeling right now. Maybe that's a little crazy, but I feel like he he still might be the guy this year. All right, guys, I'm going to get out of here. Again, really appreciate your time. Michael Welsh, he's the future. Clinton Portis, baby, talking about it as always. Shaman Mater has been on the field. Uh, I've seen him block. I've seen him make some good blocks, which is which is great because that's been an area of criticism for him, something in his game that he needs to con continue to improve. And shout out to Brett Bartoloni. I think he's making some good momentum there, recruiting the tight end position, something I think that we were hoping to see from Tim Brewster but just didn't see it uh, for, for whatever reason. So shout out to Brett Bartoloni. Keep grinding. One of our strongest recruiters on the team. I'm going to get out of here. Y'all be sure to hit that like. Really appreciate uh, everybody for the super chats. Uh, just Jenny, P, Bodie, Hustle Montana, Mike, FPSD, and uh, William Barry. I greatly appreciative of of all you guys. Uh, shout out to see you, Buffs Dynasty. Everybody else in in the chat that came in, and uh, I will be back tomorrow. And as always, smash that like on the way out and go Buffs. <laughs>